all your school rugby all in one place. This is Next Gen 50. All right, guys, welcome to Next Gen 15. So, as many of you know that have been following this channel for some time, every year we go about selecting a group of young guns, and that's generally five players um, that we're going to be keeping track of that we think could go far, maybe all the way, get to international level at some stage. And it's not to say necessarily that these are the best five players or the only five players. It's just the five players that we've taken a look at, analyzed and thought to ourselves, we can see these guys going forward for a variety of reasons. Um, so what we'll be doing today is we're going to be looking at the 2018-2019 the players and their current status to see how good our predictions are. And then we'll be naming our 2020 uh, young guns, the five players. Um, on top of that, um, we're going to be going through the dark horses first. So we'll be naming the dark horses as well and uh, the new dark horse for this year. And if you are new to the channel, please don't forget to click that subscribe button as well as bell notification. And as soon as new videos are released, you'll be the first to know. So let's start off with the dark horses. So the first dark horse in 2018 was uh, Zander Duplessis from Grey College. Just a player that I thought was tremendously underrated. I thought he had a fantastic 2018. I really liked his goal kicking ability, uh, his creativity. There was a lot of aspects of his game that I really liked, and I thought he was very much a dark horse. Um, he's currently playing for uh, Tux, University of Pretoria, um, in the uh, Varsity Cup competition. I believe he's contracted to the Bulls. Um, I think, you know, based on what uh, based on the gameplay I've seen, I think he's definitely on track to become a provincial slash super 14 rugby player. I see they have been playing him around the back line. I still think Zander is a very, very talented fly off and can go all the way as a fly off. I really do believe this guy's an extraordinary talent. What I do like about him is, um, you know, the, the freedom that he's playing with right now. He's playing with freedom. He's expressing himself creatively. So definitely looking forward to seeing uh, more from Zander in the future. Now, last year's video, I didn't name a dark horse, so basically this would be my dark horse um, for 2019, and that would be Stravino Jacobs. Now, it might seem strange to name Stravino Jacobs as a dark horse, since we know his ability. The thing is, is that I think, um, you know, I was still finding my feet with the channel in 2018, uh, when he was a grade 11, and then in grade 12, um, he was actually at under 19 level. Um, so he didn't make the SA schools team, but he's still one of the best wings in the country and someone that, you know, we haven't spoken about a heck of a lot. And um, for that reason, I do think he's a dark horse sort of in our eyes. Um, also, obviously, the Under-20 World Cup was cancelled this year, so Stravino would have definitely been part of that squad. So I think there's a lot of people that um, that have an in-depth knowledge of school rugby that know about him and know about his talent. Um but I think like the general public just aren't aware how good this guy is. So he's he's definitely the dark horse in my opinion for 2019 because he wasn't spoken about as uh, as much. Uh, but very very special player, and I think we'll be seeing him in a Bulls uh, jersey at Super 14 level, um, or whatever you're going to call it. Um, you know the European Championship if that's the case. Uh, very soon, I think he's going to definitely be playing high level rugby very soon. Very special player. So the dark horse for 2020, a lot of players to consider, even though not a lot of rugby was played, but my dark horse is um, none other than Jordan Fenter uh, from Poor Ruiz. Now, I think Jordan would have had a breakout season this year. I think he's a great player, but I think next year he's going to, uh, well, not, not only necessarily next year, but over the next couple of years, his move to Edinburgh means that he's not going to be stuck in the South African system um, which is, like, let's face it, the under-20 system is going to be brutal next year because of all the quality. I'm not saying he doesn't have the quality. I'm just saying he's got more of an opportunity to stand out with his move to Edinburgh. I think he's got a heck of a lot of opportunity to really, really stand out over there and make a name for himself. Um, so in terms of a prediction, I'm, I'm going to make quite a big call over here. So we'll see what happens. I think Jordan can go on to become a great centre. Don't get me wrong, a great center, but I've got a feeling. I don't know why I've got this feeling, but I think to myself, like, I, I see a lot of, like, a Chris Clutty type player in him. And that's why I think, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets moved to lose Ford. I think he could become a world-class number six. 
You know, he's got that strength. He's got that low center of gravity. Um, he's got a lot of pace. I mean, he's got all the attributes. I think to myself, like this guy could become a world class number six. And uh, I don't know. Look, there's a reason why I do videos on YouTube and coaches are coaches. You know, there's, <laughs> there's, uh, like I say, there's a reason for that. But I still think to myself, like Jordan is someone that can really, really, um, you know, make a nuisance of himself in the breakdown, um, put a lot of pressure on opposing fly offs. So, yeah, that's that's my sort of thing. I think I think there could be an opportunity for him to lose Ford, and I think it'll be very interesting to see what happens. But regardless, I think he, <clears throat> I think he's made a fantastic move to Edinburgh, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised five five to seven years full Scottish international when he qualifies. I mean, you know, Scotland's almost becoming like a, you know another South African team. So, you know, you'll be in good company there. I think Duan van Ameva will probably qualify soon. Skuman might qualify soon. Via Penal's already there. Alan Dahl's already there. Uh, so, yeah, a couple more South Africans in there. But, yeah, like, I'd say keep an eye on him. Let's see what happens with his development. But the dog, my, my personal dark horse for 2020. Then going over the class of 2018, our first player was um, Andre Jacobs. Absolute beast of a prop. Absolutely. I mean, you would have to name him in your top five players in South Africa in 2018. He absolutely demolished opposition scrums. Amazing player. Um, was part of the, the extended squad uh, last year for SA Under 20. I think definitely would have been one of the leaders of the SA Under 20 group this year. And in my opinion, zero doubt, he would have actually really have demolished opposition front rows. I know it's different at international level, but I just remember watching the game against Georgia last year where our, scr our scrum scr uh, struggled a little bit. And then Hundro came on and sta not only stabilized it, but, uh, you know, really drove the Georgians back. So definitely a big prospect for the future. Uh, the second player that uh, named was Ivan Ev Rus. Now, it's funny because... I really thought to myself, like, Yevon's not going to be appreciated by South African rugby. They're not going to appreciate his talent. Um, I thought to myself, you know, moving to the Sharks with all the loose forward quality that they've uh, recruited over there would be quite difficult for him. I sort of predicted a move to Europe and him representing a European team to three to five years. I really did think he was going to become another Duan van Amava. But, you know, he completely shut me up with his performances. I think he shut up any critic that, uh, that was out there, and there are very few critics out there. And, uh, you know, he was named under 21 player of the year as an under 19. He is the number one loose forward prospect in South Africa. Not only at under 21 level, in my opinion, at under 23 level. This guy has got everything it takes to become a world-class player. He's going to go so far in the game. And if he continues on his current path, he's going to become a Springbok legend. There's just no doubt about it. The kid is so talented, humble, down-to-earth. Um, he's got every quality that you can think of to go all the way to the top. So very, very happy with the, the pick that we made here in 2018. And uh, yeah, no doubt Ivan's going all the way. No doubt about it. Then the next pick was uh, Audrin Alberts, another Paul Boys player. Lock. He was SA School's captain in, um, in 2018. Towering player. Uh, very, very good ball playing ability, strong in the lineouts. But I think the thing that's impressed me the most, um, you know, based on his Instagram, is just how much size the guy's packed on. I mean, th this guy's like a mini Eben Etzebeth. Uh, you know, I, I always thought to myself, like, you'd become a very good uh, support lock, like a number five, um, very athletic, but he, he's on his way to becoming an enforcer. I mean, <laughs> you'd be shocked at how much size the guy's put on. So he's developing far quicker than I thought he would, especially from a physical perspective. And I think that's going to change the dynamic for him going forward. Um, I still think very much on track uh, in terms of going all the way. Um, then the number four player that was a pick, and remember this is no specific order, it's just five players, and that was David Kellerman. I mean, it was a crime that he was not selected for SA schools in 2018. It was an absolute travesty. Uh, he was by far the best centre at Craven Week. To me, there was no doubt about it. And um, definitely would have been part of the SA Under 20 squad this year, um, from what I've been told by some insiders. So, yeah, developing very well. Um, I think yeah, he's, he's contracted at the Bulls right now, and I think there's a big future for him over there. Um, with a couple of the Bulls players leaving, I think that opens up a bit of space for him. And, uh, yeah, just a very special player and uh, someone that can definitely go far in the game. Um, definitely part of a very outstanding 2018 group. 
And then the final player was uh, Darren Hendricks. And I just thought to myself with Darren, this is just someone that can make something happen out of absolutely nothing. I mean, if you took a, take a look at his performances, I mean, his running lines are extraordinary, his ability to f like find space, um, you know, the vision of the game, very good with the boot as well. And, uh, you know, I don't know what's happening with his development. He was playing for the Sharks under 19 last year. And um, he, from what I'm told, he wasn't part of the sound of 20 Reckoning. And, and to me, I, you don't lose that talent in just a couple of years. So I, I don't know what's going on there. Um, but I, I really, look, he played fullback um, at school. But I really can see him as being like a Chesham Colby, uh, Ches Colby type wing. I really can see that. The, the guy's just an unbelievable prospect. And um, we'll see what happens with him. I mean, I'm still confident that uh, that he can go on to develop um, into a fine rugby player. Um, but right now, in terms of like, uh, you know, going all the way to the top, in other words, re uh, reaching the green and gold jersey, that type of goal, I don't know what's happening over there. Uh, it remains to be seen. Maybe he's going to be a bit of a late developer, but, you know, again, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm seeing something that Saru isn't and vice versa. But still, Darren, to me, was one of the most exciting players I've seen at school level for a long time. Moving on to the class of 2019, so the first player that we looked at was uh, Jacques Huisson, obviously SA Schools captain, played SA Schools for two years, uh, you know, rare feat. Currently at the Shrocks, um, I was told that he what, what was probably going to be part of the SA Under 20 Reckoning this year. Um, maybe not a starter, but definitely part of the greater squad, so definitely ahead in his development. I think he would have had a standout year for the Shrocks as well. Just no rugby was being played. Um, I don't think it's going to hamper his development that much. I just think Jock is just too good. I mean, uh, next couple of years, he should be playing elite level rugby. Uh, there's no doubt about it. You know, the young raging bull. Just absolutely love his style of play, his heart, everything that he gives to the game. Just absolutely extraordinary talent. Our second player was um, Jared Taylor. Uh, his fellow Bash brother, you know, when these two were at Salborn, every time they, you know, got into the field, they caused a lot of damage. Jared also played SA schools two years. Uh, he would have had to be a part of the SA under 20 reckoning this year, in my opinion. I think he's just a very, very special player. And uh, he's just left the Shrocks, apparently, and moved to Western Province. So it looks like these two guys are going to be on opposing sides. And uh, that should be quite interesting for the future. I don't think they're going to hold back anything. Um, third player was uh, Marcel Muller, obviously. Um, you know, he was <laughs> beginning of the year, he was a second team player. And, uh, you know, eventually he starts, you know, eventually he was a starter. I mean, this guy just called tries for fun. If he's not part of the SA under 20 reckoning next year, he just has to leave the country and he has to go overseas. I think he made the wrong choice in going to France. Um, I know there were offers in Australia and uh, other countries, but I think, you know, Europe would be a good place for him to develop if he's not shown the love that he that, that, that he's needed in South Africa. So he's come back um, from Montpellier and he signed for the Cheetahs. It's a very good move for him. It's familiar territory. Um, I think it'll be an easier route um, to elite level rugby as well. Um, but if, if he does not make the SA under 20 squad next year, there's definitely problems because he was one of the best, if not the best wing in the country last year. Every time he got the ball, he made something happen. Every time he got it. And he's got, the, he's just got extraordinary size. I know there's people that have talked about moving him to lose forward and all the rest of it. It's, it's not the case. He's a wing. He's just a born to play wing. And I think he's outstanding on the wing. I mean, there's not enough good I can say about this youngster. I mean, we named him our first ever MVP, right, last year. Out of all these players, we named Marcel Muller our MVP. That's how impressed we were with him. Uh, his work rate's extraordinary. I mean, think about it. You start off with the second team and you finish, in our opinion, as one of the best, if not the best player in the country of all. You just had an extraordinary year. And um, he needs to be shown the appreciation because he can develop into a world-class wing. And if he's not going to get shown the appreciation in South Africa, he has to go overseas because... He will become a world-class wing under the uh, right guidance. I've never been so sure of something in my life. He's just, he's just too good. Fourth player, um, Kate Volhitter. And Kate's another one that's returned home. So, I mean, obviously he was in Montpellier. Um, don't know really what happened over there, behind the scenes and all the rest of it, but he's back in the Western Cape. 
Where is Kate's future? That's the question. Because next year, Sasha and Gomozulu is going to be there, and he's going to be there. So you've got two guys competing for the flower of birth. I think to myself, Cade perhaps is a fullback, and a very, very special fullback at that. I definitely think he can develop well there. Not to say that he wouldn't be a starting uh, flower of next year, but I, I just I, I think Sasha is going to develop into a world class flower. I think Cade could obviously as well. I really rate Cade highly. Um, but I just think the thing is, when I saw him in the 2019 Porras team, the, the extra dynamic that he bought at fullback, I mean, that boot of his is just something else. Um, so, you know, if you've got that creativity of Sasha at Flaff and you've got that safety and that consistency of Kate at fullback, I like that. I like that combination a lot. You know, that's the whole thing. If you've got two of the best young Flaffs in the country, instead of making each other compete against each other, try and, try and find a system where they can complement each other, if you understand what I'm trying to say. Because um, I, I, I don't necessarily think uh, Sasha could go that far um, as a fullback. I think he's a, a born fly-off, whereas I think Cade can play fullback as well. But it's great to have him back in the country because I thought we, he was definitely lost to France and I definitely thought that he would have become a, a French international if he stayed over there. I was very convinced of that. There, there is just no more uh, accurate goal kicker at this level than Cade. He just doesn't miss razor shop. Um, some people say that uh, his defence could use work, but that'll develop, you know, and I don't think he is that bad of a defender as a lot of the guys have, uh, have mentioned in comments before. Um, you know, there's a perception because of his size that he's not the best defender. He's, he's a pretty decent defender, guys, um, and definitely a player that, so much talent, so much talent. Um, we are lucky to have him back in South Africa, and you are definitely one of the first names on the team sheet next year for the under 20 team. Then the final player for the class of 2019 was Jan Hendrik Vessels. So yet another player that went over to France and came back home. Uh, he signed for the Bulls. He'll be joining his old, old coach, uh, Vessel Duplessis, over there. Uh, you know, a lot of guys have spoken about moving him to different positions as well, like either Locke or Luce Ford. Personally, Jan Hendrik to me is a born prop. He's been playing there for a long time. Um, I don't think the I don't think you should be experimenting with a talent like this in different positions and all the rest of it. I think you should leave him in his preferred position and let him develop over there, especially when he's got world class potential. If you've got world class potential, stick with that position and move forward on it. Because we've seen players in the past, Khafi de Toy, Brent Russell, those type of players, where they were they they weren't given time to develop in one specific uh, position. So it's like. They became great utility players, great uh, off-the-bench players, but they could never become properly world-class like their talent allowed for them to become, purely because, um, you know, they weren't given time to settle into that position. I think Jan Hendricks are going to be a world-class loose set prop. Scary to think he's going to get even bigger. Um, you know, he's, he's going to be an absolute beast, and he's still got that, you know, that athletic ability, that, uh, you know, that dynamism. So definitely, I mean, so talented and looking forward to seeing him back on home soil next year. He's going to be, like I said, he's going to be coached under Vessel Duplessis, which just means it's going to be amazing for him. You know, he's going to be in a very familiar environment with a coach that understands him, knows how to play him. And, uh, you know, sooner rather than later, I think we'll be seeing him play uh, elite level rugby. Then our class of 2020. So these are the five players. Now, guys, remember... I'm not saying these are the only five players. I'm just saying, like, these are the five players we are choosing to track. Okay, so let's get into it. First player, Kerwin Goetze. And remember, it's no specific order. So, Kerwin, to me, just, you know, you don't get talents like this that come along every day, guys. It's, you just have to go on to DigiTV, for example, Take a look at his game against Transvalia last year. I know they are not the strongest opposition, um, but the, his ability to open up space was just ridiculous. Also, his game against Paul Ruiz, I mean, every time he gets a ball, something just amazing is likely to happen. Uh, the pace is unbelievable, really quick. And, you know, despite his frame, he's actually a lot more powerful than he looks. Um, no, we've spoken about Kuhn a lot, and um, he's going to be moving to the Sharks. Great outfit over there for him. Going to be under the guise of uh, guard of um, uh, Horak over there, who's a fantastic uh, back three player in the day himself. So that should be an interesting development over there for him. Second player, 
Sasha Mgomazulu. Now, we've just spoken a bit about Sasha, and in the past we've spoken about him a lot. You know, the last time Bishop had a fly-off of this level was Herschel Gibbs. That was back in 1992. That just shows you a once-in-a-generation type talent. Uh, you know, he just makes the game look easy. And it, 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 there's just a, you know, I hate to use this word, but it's like poetry. There's just a poetry to how this guy plays. You, you, you can just see everything so slick. All the movements are just natural. It's It all comes naturally to him, yet he has still got this amazing work rate. And he goes out every day and trains and tries to do his best to improve his game. His goal kick ins out of this world. His ability to kick for corners and um, uh, you know set up the you know set up the wing for example when doing a corner kick is just unbelievable. You know Keegan Blackenberg's try with Sasha's assist was unbelievable, and I think that's only going to get better with time. the The whole thing with this level of talent is that reading the game, you know, it's it it can come with experience, but there's sort of a natural ability that you're just born with. You either have it or you don't, and Sasha was born with it. Third player, Mambo Mkize. And I'm going to make a big call here. I'm going to make a massive call here. The heir apparent to Sonny Bill Williams. That's how, that's how confident I am about Mambo's future. His distribution is just out of this world. And he's, he's a big boy. So the thing is, is that he's got the power. He's got the pace. He's got the distribution. He's got everything. Every weapon that you want in an inside center, he's got that weapon, and he's got it in spades. And that is despite still being in school. I think his development is just going to accelerate like crazy after he's left school. So we'll see what happens. But I'm, I'm, I'm confident. I've got no doubt uh, Mumbo is going to be fast-tracked, and he's going to go all the way. Now, before you think that's ridiculous, think about how Apalele Fassi burst onto the scene, you know. He just came out of nowhere and like, you know, he's a 20-year-old. So it's not outside the realm of possibility that two, three years' time, Mumbo is a starter at the Shocks. It's not outside the realm of possibility. His development will be very quick. Mark my words. I could be wrong, but I'm very confident in it. And I think he has to be part of the S under 20 reckoning next year as well. I think that will accelerate his development even further. Just an absolutely outstanding center. Uh, fourth player, um, we went with Joshua Frieden. Now, it might seem contradictory in a way because, um, you know, Josh wasn't ranked that highly on the PAX 100. You know, he was top 15. Um, but the thing is, is that um, he's made a fantastic move to the Lions. He's made a very, very good move over there. The thing what you guys got to understand about coastal boys, okay, for, especially from the Southern Cape region, there is no dream to really go to the Bulls or to go to the Lions. The dream is to go to Western Province or go to the Sharks, to stay on the coast. It's the natural inclination of a coastal boy to stay on the coast, obviously. And a lot of these guys that are from Salbourne or from Grey High, Queens, all the rest of it, they normally end up at unions like the Sharks or Western Province. That's, that's generally what happens. Um, from what I understand... It's going to be hard for him because, you know, going from East London, you know, to Johannesburg will be a big step. But the fact that he's made that step is um, testament to his character and also testament to um, his advisors. Because if you take a look at the Lions, there's a very, very clear pathway there for them, um, you know, for these type of youngsters, especially Josh. There's a very clear pathway. I mean... In terms of loose fought competition, he would have been inundated with competition at the Western Province area and the Sharks as well. But if he heads over to the Lions, there's definitely, you can see there's openings there. There's definitely a pathway for him to be playing in lead level rugby very soon. And, uh, you know, his character, having had, you know, having had the chance to chat to him, having the chance to like do his highlights videos and to really, you know, get in depth into his footage and watch his game. He was very much an unsung hero for Salborn last year. Obviously, if you've got Jared Taylor and John Huisson over there, all eyes are on them. And he didn't let it get to him. He didn't let the, the fact that the tension was going elsewhere get to him. He was focused on his own game and developing himself as a player. And I just think this kid is going to go so far in the game. It's character. It's a willingness to make sacrifices. Um, it's a leadership. It's a maturity way beyond his years. Um, so... He's my young, one of my young guns for 2020. And there's, there'll be a lot of argument about other players that, you know, this guy should have been there, this guy's more talented. Fine. 
it is not only about talent. And that's not to say, uh, you know, Josh isn't a talented player. He's a usually talented player. But maybe there are players out there that are more naturally talented than him. But they won't outwork him. You can mark my words in there. They will not outwork him. And that's going to be 90% of what, it, what's, what, what it's about. It's about your ability to work and continue working to reach the, reach the top. Because there's so many players that have relied on talent alone. And we've seen that, you know, um, a lot of players that SA schools two years, uh, we're going to go all the way and they just didn't have the work rate after school. They just never the discipline after school and they couldn't make it. Josh, like I said, will not have that problem. Final player. And uh, we went with Sizonke Vomazonke. And that should be no surprise. Um, another player we've had a chance to talk to a lot. Um, you know, yeah, his thoughts on, um, on his rugby journey, do his highlights video. And, you know, it's, it's another guy. It's very different to, um, to school back in the day, you know. I'm not giving my age away or anything like that. But generally, you know, your lead level rugby players came across as a bit arrogant and all the rest of it. This new, this new generation is very different. Now, I would say more confidence and arrogance more than anything else. And I think Sizonke, um, he's, he's also going to be at the Lions. Um, and I think him and Josh are just going to really complement each other so much. I think they're going to play very well together. The Bulls lose trio is going to be deadly, guys. But I think the Lions are going to be workhorses. They're going to rely on work rate and teamwork and all the rest of it and should all, obviously uh, give the Bulls some challenges. And I think Suzonke... <sighs> I did a video earlier this year, you know, the Springbok squad prediction for 2027. I said I wasn't going to include players that are currently in school, but I said there was one player who I felt would be part of that squad and could potentially become a Springbok captain in the future, and that's this man, Sezonke Vumazonke. Don't want to put too much pressure on him, you know, but um, I really do feel that he can go that distance. Um, he's, he, he's really impressed me with his work rate, his character, um, sacrifices for the team. Just do yourself a favor, guys. Watch his footage. We've done highlights on him before. Just watch his footage. Watch his gameplay. And you can see that he's definitely a, like a, a star that's going to be on the horizon. So, those are the young guns for the class of 2020. Um, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Um, obviously, there been, there's going to be quite a bit of argument about players that are missing. But we can only select five. Um, so far, obviously from the class of 2018, four out of the five would have been in the SA under 20 squad, uh, two out of the five in 2019, I think all five of these guys would have definitely been in the SA school squad. So, so far so good, but you know, this is a long-term project, so we'll see what happens and uh, how far all these guys can go and we'll keep updating this every year as the channel carries on. Thanks a lot for taking the time to watch and have a fantastic week further. Cheers. Bye. Thank you.